folks, the question, the million dollar question in this market is when will the stock market bottom? And in this video here today, I'm gonna to tell you exactly when the stock market's gonna bottom. I'm gonna tell you exactly when I expect this to happen. And I'm gonna present the evidence in this video on why I think this is gonna transpire like this. And I do not make many uh, short-term predictions around the stock market. As you know, I'm a long-term investor. And even if I'm wrong, in the end, it really doesn't matter because uh, I'll still end up making a lot of money in the end. Uh, uh, buying great companies that have tremendous futures in front of themselves. But with that being said, uh, I will make a very, very um, interesting prediction today that's going to shock a lot of people because everybody's wondering, like, are we like a month away from bottoming, like two months, six months, a year, two years, three years? Like, what's going on here, okay? Now, the last time I did one of these videos, when the stock market will bottom, it was March 18th of 2020, and I did a video, When the Stock Market Will Bottom. And I said in that video that we were within 30 days of the stock market bottoming out. And essentially what happened is a few days later, the stock market bottomed out. It bottomed out on March 23rd, 2020. And in that video, I went into all the different points I had on why I thought the stock market was within 30 days of bottoming, essentially, okay? And so... We hit the bottom there, and um, obviously the the rest is kind of history, right? And I, I, you know, at that time, a lot of short sellers, a lot of people that were negative on the market, were like, "What? This is a bunch of crap! Like, we can't have just reached the bottom already." A lot of folks expected us to go down much further, down to like Dow. Yeah, at that time, there were people making predictions: Dow fifteen thousand, Dow ten thousand. Uh, you know, people were even predicting that the Dow was going to go under ten thousand at that time, and uh, I just didn't see it that way at all, and. Um, Obviously, you know, that, that kind of went to that, okay? So, uh, yeah, time to get into all this evidence. Hope you guys enjoy a video like this as always. And um, let me know what you kind of think about this. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We also got the massive Valentine's Day sale going on right now. There'll be a pinned comment down there if you're looking to get in my private stock group, Financial Fortress, learn everything I know about stock picking, running portfolios, all those sorts of things. Check that out. That'll be pinned comment down there. All right, guys, so first slide I want to start out with here is around the mighty inflation everybody's favorite subject right now so nonetheless inflation's gone insane recently i think we all know that um and as the, they call it the cp lie uh it should actually be way 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 higher than it really is but that's the numbers uh that that we get put in front of us but regardless whatever way you want to slice it we know where we you know inflation's been ridiculous right it's been eating it, us up and uh Essentially, inflation is going to start to moderate quite a bit, in my opinion, starting in April. And so the February number should be very, very high as well. The March number should be very, very high. But after that, I look at inflation as starting to go down, not in terms of like go negative. Uh, so I think it's very important to understand what this concept is essentially, okay? So right now we have a uh, you know CPI at 7.5%, at right? Well, if you're gonna need it, you're gonna need uh, you know another 7.5 percent on top of April, and another 7.5 percent on top of May, and another 7.5 percent plus on top of June. That begins to become uh, very unrealistic, in my opinion. And so I think the CPI is going to end up starting to come in more toward a 6% number and then more toward a 5% number and then more toward a 4% number as we go throughout this year. And so I think we have about one more month of a really high number and then likely the numbers are going to moderate. And uh, we'll we'll go from you know sevens and in, in eight range uh, to then a six to seven range and then to a five to six range. And so if you're looking at in, you know the the market's kind of looking at at inflation as like when does it when do we when have we peaked? Uh, it was, is January the peak? Is February the peak in terms of the percentage up or is it March uh, or is it later in the year essentially? And um, I think we're going to likely see a peak very soon within the next one to two months when it comes to inflation, and then we'll actually start to see the numbers uh, moderate and start to go to more of a 6 to 7% range and then a 5 to 6% range. So that's going to be big for the market overall. The market does not like to see inflation continuing to rise and rise and rise to, to you know, uh, very, very, very high numbers. It makes the market feel very uncomfortable right now, okay? So first, first off here, second point I want to make here is uh, I watched the Russell very closely with all the other indexes this entire week, essentially. And what I witnessed is the Russell outperformed the indexes almost every single day. And, you know, specifically, I watched the Russell versus the NASDAQ. 
Uh, but it, it outperformed the indexes almost every single day. And this is a great example here on Friday. The Russell was down 1%. Okay, That's small cap stocks. Russell 2000 is small cap stocks. Meanwhile, the NASDAQ was down almost 3%. The S&P 500 is down 1.9%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was down 1.43%. Okay. What this means, what you're seeing in front of yourself and why this matters so much is when you are in a market that is in a, in a you know, a vicious downtrend, the Russell's going to lead you there first usually and the Russell's going to lead you out of that first, okay? And so if you're seeing the Russell start to outperform, that should give you some comfort that, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say we, we've already reached the bottom, but you're you're in a bottoming out process because the, the small cap stocks and more risky stocks, those always get hit first and the big dog stocks, they get hit last. And then when you start coming out of a mess, right, a messy stock market, the small cap stocks are the ones that start to go up first and start to outperform first and then starts to the mids after that. Then after that starts large caps and then last is the mega caps, okay? And so we're watching ourselves literally just this week start this this playing out process where the the days that the market was up did Russell outperformed the upside and the days when the market was down the Russell didn't do as bad as the other indexes okay so that's something very very important no one really uh, you know it's not that that many people pay attention to this but I think it's extremely important because if you see every single downturn and almost every single upturn you know small caps are going to lead you to that downturn and small caps are going to lead you up the other way okay so that's very very important to pay attention to there. Now, in terms of the whole Russia situation, when it comes to this, we're going to know if Russia is going to make a move within the next one, two weeks. If, if Russia is going to make a move, it's going to be within the next couple weeks here. Okay. And, you know, everybody's expects within the next week, essentially. Okay. And so the reason this is really important is we're going to know like if Russia is going to make a move or not. And this is, this is one of those things that if they do make a move, the market's going to likely move down because of that, right? And there's going to be all these fears around uh, global disruption and, and the oil market's going to continue to spike and things like that. And so if, if Russia makes a move and they decide to, to do what, what some folks expect them to do, then essentially, uh, you know, the market's going to move down short term because of that, right? If they don't make a move within the next couple of weeks, the market will start moving up and the you know global oil markets and all those things will stabilize and we'll start to um, get to a place where the, the fears aren't as much. But right now, there's there's right around peak fear in regards to the situation. And like I said, within literally within one to two months, we're going to know, or actually not one to two months, I'm sorry, within one to two weeks, we're going to know if Russia makes a move here, okay? That's very, very important for the market psychologically, Okay. Next thing, uh, basically the Fed meeting's coming up. Now, you ever got a shot as a kid or you're about to get a shot, you know, as a, as a kid, right? Uh, you, I'm sure you had that feeling of like, oh, man, I don't want to get this shot. I don't want to be here right now. Like, ah, oh, is this going to hurt a lot? It's like no fun, right? And that's where the market's at right now in regards to the March meeting for the Fed. And everybody's looking at this and, and like, wait, is the Fed going to move before the March meeting? Or are they going to move at the March meeting? How much are they going to move? Now, first off, the market, this is the silliest thing, okay? This is the silliest thing. Everybody knows the Fed's going to raise rates. Everybody. like I don't know one person, one person on this planet that knows anything about global finance that doesn't expect the Fed to go up <laughs> with the Fed funds rate, it, you know, come the come within a month or, or so, right? And so it's it's silly that this is still like a thing that everybody's like freaking out about. Um, but nonetheless, I think it's like like that moment when you're going to about to get a shot, and it's like okay, you know, let's just get it over with. And so for this reason. It's going to be big that we just get that 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 raise over with. I think everybody's pretty much now expecting uh, a half a percentage move, a half a half a point move, and um, that's what I'm expecting from that Fed meeting. And so you know now it's at this point where we're getting pretty darn close to this happening, and now it just needs to happen essentially. So that whole fear and anxiety around that situation is about to alleviate very very shortly here. Now, let's talk about a few of the biggest stocks that really run the stock market, right? These stocks really dictate where the indexes go because they are the biggest of the big stocks, okay? Meta Platforms is one of those stocks. This stock is trading under a 16 PE. You know, I've owned uh, Meta uh, over time and I own it currently. And, uh, you know, I, I track all these stocks we're about to get into here. And I can tell you, I've never seen Meta trading at, a, at, at under a 16 P ratio. That is something I look at and it's just ridiculous to be quite honest. And so what we're going to find here is a lot of these, I call them mega cap stocks. I don't call them large caps. I call them mega caps. Okay. The $100 billion plus club. 
a lot of these stocks are trading at, at, at valuations they haven't seen ever in their company's histories in terms of P ratios and things like that. And they've just gotten unbelievably cheap. And I mean unbelievably cheap. Look at Netflix. I don't ever remember a time where I could see Netflix at a 34 PE ratio. Like for Netflix, are you kidding me? You got to be flipping my dang flapjacks. A 34 PE is, is ridiculously low for Netflix. That's just, you just don't see that. Okay, uh, good old Google me Google, uh, uh, 23 uh, PE ratio on Google, like this is a stock I usually see at a 28, 30, 33 PE ratio, maybe 35 PE ratio, a 23 for Google, you know, that's pretty darn low. Even Amazon's under a 50 PE ratio for this stock right now. This is a stock that you usually look at and the, the PE ratio is anywhere is between 60, 70, 80 on a Ford PE basis. I believe on a Ford PE basis for Amazon, it's now under 40 or somewhere around there roughly. So yeah, you don't usually see this for Amazon stock ever. And so the mega caps now are getting to very, very cheap valuations based upon historical norms. And that's putting us into a, a market here where, you know, these stocks are actually looking really, really tasty. And I, I gotta say, I haven't seen I haven't seen the mega caps trade cheap for a while. And that's one of the reasons I've I've flooded a lot of money into small caps. But here we are in the situation where actually mega caps are starting to look very, very appetizing. And I can tell you these sorts of companies only stay uh, at appetizing levels for so long because guess what? At the end of the day, you know what everybody wants to own. They want to own Meta. They want to own Netflix. They want to own Amazon. They want to own Google. These are stocks everybody wants to own, so they can only stay cheap for so long. And then next thing you know, people are like, uh, yeah, where else am I going to put my money? Where it's being devalued constantly in cash, right? In a savings account or CD account where it's basically being devalued constantly, right? In real estate, that, that super high right now? No, of course not. You're, you want to you want to own the biggest of the big dog companies, the ones that are profit machines. And so these stocks, believe me, they don't stay cheap for very long. Let's just put it that way. And next thing you know, they start beasting again. Okay. So when it comes to mega caps, a lot of them are trading very, very cheap and um, unsustainably low. And if these stocks continue to go lower in the short term, it's just going to put them at, at you know, uh, cheaper and cheaper ratios where, you know, it, it just becomes to, it begins to get into the state where people can't ignore these stocks and fund managers have to start flooding in money, okay? Next thing up here, and I talk about this a lot on the channel, S&P 400 mid caps, S&P 600 small caps trading extremely, extremely cheap on historical norms. That puts us into a situation where uh, essentially small caps and mid caps have to move up. You can only stay cheap and in these valuation ranges for so long. As with on the upside, you can only stay at unsustainably high numbers for so long. And on the downside, you can only stay at unsustainably low numbers for so long. And then you have to come up essentially and get into more normal ranges. So small caps and mid caps will move up. And when they move up, they will move up quite substantially and quite fast nonetheless. Okay. Next thing I want to point out here is Rona Rona. So the numbers in the United States of America have dropped off massively over the past few weeks. That should continue to. And what we're seeing play out now is actually uh, a lot of the states that had mask mandates are now starting to go away. Okay. Even my state, Nevada, uh, you know, my, my main state, Nevada, uh, we've taken away the mask mandate now. And uh, in Vegas, essentially, now that's being taken away. So what we're going to see play out over the next three to four months is the economy is going to finally truly open back up for real, for real, okay? And this is a huge, huge deal. And so what this means, essentially, is offices are, are going to open back up in scale venues are going to open back up in scale. Everything's going to open back up in scale over the next couple months, essentially. And this is a huge deal for the global economy. And another uh, boom effect, I guess you can say, uh, as we would call it. And what, you know, I talk to a lot of people that work for the biggest of the big dog companies in the world, a lot of the mega caps, okay? And they all are telling me that their companies are planning to go back to the office at least part-time within the next three months, and a lot of them within the next two months, and they're going to like, likely open up gl global travel this upcoming summer, okay? 
And so that means there's going to be a whole lot more money spent out there, a whole lot more travel going on. And I was even like running the numbers, uh, you know, of like, you know, what these individuals essentially will be spending on these trips and what their companies will be spending on the trips. And I'm like, man, that's a that's a huge boom to the economy that just hasn't been going on for two years now, essentially. And now that's finally going to start again. And so if you're talking about the global economy, I mean, we already have a global economy that I would call pretty darn healthy right now. Um this is just another thing that if you're worried about recession, right, um, which I, is something I've been worried about, you start thinking about like where our economy's at right now, and then you take into effect that all these massive companies are going to open back up their offices and are, are over the next coming months and are going to open up global travel again. You know, I'm even hearing things out of China now about China opening up in a, in a major way for global travel. These are things that are absolutely massive, guys. And so this is really good news, and it's not just the United States. If you look at the worldwide numbers, we've also started to come down now very nicely over the last week or two. And so this should continue to just kind of tank down and tank down. And so the Rony Rona, uh, thank goodness, is finally going to take a backdrop and uh, global economy will open back up for real over the coming months. And that's going to be another boom for the overall global economy and just gives it this one last good feeling of the world opening essentially and the economy being finally open and not limited because I think there's just kind of been this overwhelming kind of feeling about things being limited, the masks, all those sorts of things. It's just a negative vibe. It's a negative vibe for the entire market to be quite honest. And it's been a negative vibe for the the entire market and all that stuff is going long gone. Okay. So that's good news. Now, next point uh, I want to make, and I'll tell you exactly when I expect this uh, stock market to bottom is because there's so much, and I mean so much, to be worried about in the short term, right? The Fed. What's the Fed going to do? How many times are they going to raise rates? And by the way, people have gone insane with how many, you know, now I'm hearing people are, are expecting the Fed to raise rates eight times in 22. Like, like pretty soon it's going to be like 20 times and 30 times. Like, we're going so insane with the Fed expectations now that people are just going, just literally going wild with it now. Like, it started with like three to four, then it was like five to six, then it was, you know, seven. Now people are talking about eight I mean, pretty soon there's going to be predictions from some Wall Street bank that the Fed's going to raise rates 10 times in 22 and then 12 times. It's just like it's getting mad, right? So the Fed, you have the Russia drama. You have inflation going crazy, right? You have the worker shortage. You have Amazon and Facebook or Meta doing weak guidance, right? You know, the supply chain's being messy, which once again... We've heard from companies saying that basically that, that situation is getting better. You have no stimulus, buyback. You have so much that, that you know, the shorts have been uh, fabricating out there and just talking about over and over about all these short-term points that the shorts have gone wild shorting this market. The put options have gone wild in this market, essentially. And the reason is because you have so much negativity in the short term and just people haven't been bullish and, and you're getting constantly kind of fed negative stuff. I went on CNBC last night. All it was was straight negative stuff. Like every single thing on the front page was just negative, negative, negative. You're being, you're being, I don't want to say brainwashed into a negative mindset around the economy and the stock market right now. But everywhere you look, you see bearish videos, bearish stuff on the internet. And in the internet world right now, you would think it's the end of the world. And then you go to the real world and you start to realize, oh man, it's not the end of the world. Oh my gosh, like things are actually pretty decent. And then you go to the internet world and it's like, oh my gosh, the whole world's ending, essentially. The stock market's done. And so this has led shorts to go completely wild on this market. Short stocks the max. And I can tell you, when this baby flips, it is going to create you know short squeezes. Like I'm telling you, we have never seen short squeezes that we will see when this market flips. And uh, I've seen some pretty wild ones, but I'm telling you, you know, I think Snapchat... Uh, Snap, I think that was the first uh, real major short squeeze of, of t- kind of what I'm talking about. And if you didn't see what happened with Snap, that, sh- that stock on, after its earnings day moved up like 59% or 58% or some insane number. And that's like a stock that's like a 30, 40, 50 billion dollar market cap, like just ridiculous that it would move like that. Shorts have gone wild. And so essentially, what's going to happen here, don't forget about the massive deal we got going on for Valentine's Day right now. There'll be a pinned comment down there. And also get yourself some free stocks from Moomoo. There'll be a pinned comment as well, uh, why the, the, the stocks are still cheap out there, okay? So the stock market is within 60 days of bottoming. Yes, you heard it here first. The stock market's within 60 days of bottoming. Could even be within 30 days of bottoming, in my opinion. Now, if I'm wrong on that, 
that's fine. I'm one that's a long-term investor. I'll continue to buy. Um, but the only other time I made a prediction like this, I wasn't wrong. So we'll see what happens. And uh, maybe I'm right again. And within the next 60 days, we hit a bottom and then we start trending up. Um, and like I said, if not, all good with me. I'll just continue. When you got the long-term game, I'll just continue to pick up stocks. And if the Chef is cheaper and Honest is cheaper and Corsair is cheaper and the stocks I've been buying go down, perfectly fine with me. I'll continue to load up on the shares. But yeah, I feel like the stock market's within 60 days of bottoming. Much love as always. Hope you enjoy this and have a great day.